I'm just writing an Evan Ingram note, though. Uh, well, how do you all account for, you know, the um, running back, receivers, and the tight end? And yeah, it presents a tough challenge, right? I mean, there's they got a lot of good players, um, <clears throat> you know, but, you know, so do we. And so that's what, you know, we talk to our guys, hey, here's our plan, here's the matchups, you know, things that we have to do. This is what they do well, this is what we do well, and how we kind of implement it together. Um, but uh, yesterday was a really good practice, felt that our guys uh, know who they're playing against. They've done a really good job studying the tape. Um, and so we'll be really looking forward to those matchups come Sunday. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a good test for sure. And uh, talk to Jesse and uh, a couple other players about how things have uh, come together with the stops and, and different stretches of the last couple of games. Uh, how can you all build off of that moving forward? Yeah, just just continually, you know, look at ourselves, um, continually push uh, fundamentals, uh, technique, and execution. Um, you know, just get that much better this game than we did last game, um, and continue just to build on, you know. You know, continue to make stops, continue to take the ball away, the tackling, um, the takeaways, you know, ball disruption and pursuit and really push those things. Uh, but really felt like our guys, um, although it wasn't a favorable outcome, uh, feel good about, you know, our players, the, the confidence is growing. It's only three games together, you know, and so the time on task, you know, and all the, the reps are accumulating and everything in the game. And so it's building some confidence. Uh, are we where we want to be? No, we're not. Um, but feel that we're heading in that direction. Then the pressure numbers, uh, just th three sacks and 20. Uh, how can you all ramp those up moving forward? Yeah, pressure numbers and sack numbers different, right? So right. feel like, uh, 20 hits and yeah, I mean, that's it's been pretty good. The pressure number has been pretty good. I'll tell you, golf did a great job getting rid of the ball. I mean, our guys hit them. Uh, we counted 13 hits on the quarterback this last game in the passes. Um, and so they'll, the, the sacks will come. You know, the, the most important thing is, is the pressures. And you look at the third down numbers, you know, the pressures with the coverage together, you know, that was working really well in our favor in that game. Uh, but, you know, the, don't want the guys to overly press for that because that it happens. Just continue to hit the quarterback and he'll hold it just to count longer. And then that's when they really come. You guys obviously talked about it a little bit. You guys obviously have rotated the outside corner spot with Trey. Mm -hmm. yep. Is that something that's sustainable? I mean, it all sounds like, Based on what our Jerry said, like you guys want to eventually get the reps back and, and start. But is that a sustainable thing on the outside? Or? I think it can be. I think it, it all is on performance. You know how those other guys are playing as well. Um, you know, we saw Mike Hughes out there making a couple plays. Um, he was good in coverage. You got Jeff, you got Trey, uh, you know, you got Clark, you know, can go in the game and, and play some outside corner as well. And, you know, you got D who's playing inside. He can go out there. And so we've got a bunch of guys that can play that position. And so it gives you, uh, you know, the ability to feel good about whoever's out there. And so if you got two guys and that's it and one goes down and then you feel like you're really in trouble. We don't feel like that. We feel, hey, next man up, we're going to go in and, and, and our guys are going to do the job that they have to do, whoever's out there. So is it sustainable? Maybe. Um, you know, wanting to be one of those guys take off at it, you know, but ultimately, you know, Jeff, you know, was playing very well before the injury. And so we got to get him back to that level that he was playing and then go from there. And you're, you know, some defensive coordinators believe in traveling corners, some defensive coordinators won't sides, that's it. Where mm -hmm. do you, where do you kind of come down on that in terms of how you like to handle? Sure, it's the, it's the best for uh, the player. Uh, the defense, right, and, and ultimately what's going to help us win. That's where it's going to come down to. And so if we need to travel one week or we need to play left and right one week, well, then that will be whether the team that we're playing, our players, uh, but there's a lot that goes into that. So can we do that? Certainly. But we certainly can play left and right at the same time. And so there's not like one, my clear cut, hey, we're going to do this. Um, also that, you know, you're a little bit multiple. And so they don't always know where one guy's going to line up all the time. How much does, say, AJ have a say in that versus you guys say this is what you think that? Well, there's, there's always conversation with the players. There's always, hey, you know, always like to ask, what do you see? What do you like? What do you feel comfortable with? What call would you make at this particular situation to get kind of what, what they're thinking about? And then, okay, they're thinking more like this. Well, all right, well, 
I see how they see it. And maybe that's the, okay, we'll go in that direction. There's also another way, uh, you, you see it like this, we see it like this, and let's come together in the middle ground. And so there's some conversation. As far as AJ goes, you know, he'll, he, he'll line up anywhere and co cover anybody. I mean, that's his mindset, which is great to have in a corner, right? All of our guys are like that. So um, there's some collaboration in, in what we're doing. Um, there, there needs to be, it, it, you know, National Football League. These are guys who've played a lot of plays, smart guys. You know, they, they know the game. And so always want to hear what they have to say uh, before we make a, you know, concrete decision on what we're doing. And a couple more. Yeah, what, like, what does that have to say? Although, so you, you weren't here when they were drafted. Mm -hmm. What do they need to do to get more work on the defense? Yeah, well, I think, you know, with AK, you know, he got a lot of snaps in the first couple of games. Uh, this game, the plan just wasn't, you know, that way, you know. So I think everything every week is unique. Uh, it's in unique into it's that week. And so sometimes they'll get more, sometimes they get less. You know, you'll see, uh, you know, we move guys around all the, all the time. And so uh, it's just like what you said with your corner question. You know, what's best to help the team win? That's, that's the most important thing. And that's what our focus is. With the what about the story? I'd say, what about what about the end? Yeah, he's coming along. You know, he's got a role in special teams. He's he continue to build. You know, he's a young player as well. Uh, we'll get him going. With Nate stepping into the starting lineup at linebacker for Troy, just what is he going to add, provide for this defense? Yeah, I mean, you saw it in week two, right? You know, so he's got a game underneath his belt. So there's a there's a level of confidence where this is not his first game. This is his second game. You know, and so. Uh, Kind of was joking with Nate. He had a bye week last week, you know. Although he got in, but you know, now he's ready to go, you know. And so, uh, you know, I know he played special teams. and got to get a couple snaps, but uh, no, Nate's Nate's great. He's he's ready to go. He's very confident. He's got great look in his eye. He's confident in, in that he's played. It's been also great to see Nate in OTAs and the camp and everything, and and, and uh, in these preseason games, uh, he got a lot of reps at that. particular position. So it's not like he's a new player coming in and having to go. So there's a lot of time on task there. But the biggest thing with him is you could just feel his confidence again, uh, his energy, his, his excitement. His, like now he's, you know, he's, he's, he's ready to go uh, and it will continue to prepare for them. But it's, it's pretty cool to see him out there and, and kind of next man up mentality. Although, you know, it really feel for Troy. Troy's put in a lot of work, um, you know, but, you know, Troy will come back. He will. Uh, very confident in that he'll he'll come back better than he was before, but now Nate, you know Nate will pick up and, and we'll, we'll keep this thing going. All right, guys, that's all the time we have. Thank, Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, you know Jamal um, Agnew, he um, one of the dangerous uh, returns in the league. How do you all prepare for him? He's taking taking back punts and kickoffs for touchdowns. Jamal had the opportunity to work with him for two years in Detroit. Uh, overall, he's just a good human being, good man. You can see why guys like to block hard and play hard for him when they're on the field with him. Uh, dual returner, he has dynamic speed where he could get to the edge, and he's fearless where he'll get vertical with the football, whether he's taking the ball out from eight or nine deep as a kickoff returner D-led, or in some situations too as a punt returner. His biggest punt return was in a plus 50 down punt situation versus Indianapolis where there's a bunch of guys around him, took a chance and got to the perimeter and had about a 50 yard return. So our, our hands are gonna be full this week, just like any other week, but he's one of the better, if not the best dual returner in the league. And it's a big challenge come Sunday versus the Jaguars. I was surprised you just had one Pro Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's an award, but you look at he has four punt returns for touchdowns. Mm -hmm. He has two to three kickoff returns for touchdowns and he has a field goal a return for 109 yards for a touchdown. So he's very productive. He's another offensive weapon for Jacksonville. And he, uh, Farewell, the, the special teams coordinator there, and they do a great job of setting up blocks to get him vertical with the football and flipping the field. And you can see when you watch later on in the season last year in the 2022 season and in the playoffs, he was a big weapon. He was their explosive first play uh, player for them when it came to the return game. So I'm excited for what he's been doing in his career. His best ball is yet to come. And I, I think Jacksonville, they do a phenomenal job when you talk about the return game and getting him set up to have explosive returns. And what are the uh, traits for punter Logan Cook and uh, kicker Brandon McManus? Brandon McManus had a long career in Denver. He has a shorter approach where he has a very strong leg, whether you're talking about field goals or kickoffs. 
When it comes to his directional ability as a kickoff guy, he could give you the same look, hit, hit the ball either way. Um, brings a lot of veteran experience in that room. Same with Logan Cook. He could kick off as well, too, because he's a bigger ki uh, punter, and he does a great job of flipping the field for them. And he has a bunch of different kicks, and, or sorry, punts that he could use to put stress on the return team. Um, so those guys, they both are very dynamic. You know, Brandon McManus was a great addition for their special teams unit, and we look forward to the challenge this weekend. Marquise, when um, when when Koo is going through a, a kind of stint like he is now, even just going back to all the way to Miami with those those missed extra points, um, what like what is your role in trying to assist him in any way? Like, do you talk about it? Like, do you talk about? It? I'm just kind of curious um, what exactly what, what that process is like. It's more like in game or uh, actually post -game? Not, not even in game. I'm talking about just kind of like throughout the weeks and kind of getting him prepared to to go out there every week. Oh, hey, what's up, Mike? You good? No, no, no. All right. Like, is there any like social psychology or anything like that that goes into it, or is it just kind of keep your standard routines and, and just go out there and do it? Any well, the one thing I do appreciate about Ku, with him individually as a kicker, he's an athlete that just so happens he kicks the ball. He played DB, played receiver in high school. He's played multiple positions, played multiple sports. So he's not just fixated on just having that. I would say the kicking mindset of is like boom or bust. He's really, he digs deep into the process. I'm process driven and oriented, he is too, which helps us work well together. And the same thing with our head coach, the same thing with our GM and how we operate here, having that growth mindset. So when we get in these situations where if there is a missed kick, even if there's a made kick, those are conversations that we have. And sometimes depending on the type of person you're dealing with, whether it's a kicker or if there's a DB, um, in game or within the practice or after practice, you got to know what motivates them, what makes them tick, how to be demanding without being demeaning. Um, I can't just go to him like, hey, why'd you miss the kick? Like, right, right. duh, he, like he missed the kick with any uh, kicker. They're the one that kicked it. So when it comes to like situations, whether it's he missed a kick in Detroit or if he missed a kick last year versus the Chargers, well, I'll just go up to him, hey, how was the snap? How was the hold? How was your contact on the ball? Is it's straightforward. There's no point fingers like, oh, the snap wasn't good. Oh, the hold wasn't good. At the end of the day, the ball's on the ground, and he has a lot of responsibility being being a player for us, being a kicker for the Atlanta Falcons, who directly contributes to putting points on the board. He's like, hey, I got to have better contact or whatever the case may be. Those conversations are very easy, and we're very blessed to have specialists that we have when we talk about Bradley, Koo, and Liam, where we are, we're very transparent in our room. We talk about – uh, things that we could get better at, ways that we could get better at certain techniques and fundamentals. And those conversations are easy. And we all know we're all on the same page when something goes well, something doesn't go well, something needs to improve. We're all on the same page. So whether it's in game, in practice, in the meeting room, before the game, after the game, those conversations are super easy. And they make my job really easy. And our coaches, whether you talk about Coach Baker or Coach Steve Hoffman, makes our jobs easy because we have the right type of men in our room when it comes to the specialist position. Because there's one, there's, you think about a kicker, there's only 32 right. on active rosters. That's a very, I mean, it could be a stressful position or it could be good stress where you think about like, hey, I'm very blessed and fortunate to be a part of that elite group of men in the NFL when it comes to that position. And then uh, also just through three games, how are you seeing um, punt return without Avery, obviously, this year? Um, and I know we've talked to Spray during training yeah. camp how important, you know, some of those returns are in terms of the odds that they give you to, to then score on those drives. How how you felt that team has been? Well, I look at it as there's a lot of variables in punt return. It's based on down and distance, could base your call, how many guys you have in the box, whether you want to call a rush or call a return. It's based on the type of punt you're getting, what kind of punter you're going against, and then it's all come. And then you got to add the other variable where you talk about coverage. So there's a lot of different variables. If you just talk about the punt, hang time, distance, location, what type of guy we're going against, okay, what type of gunners are we going against? Is it fourth and one? If it's fourth and one, and we're going against teams that are they run a lot of fakes, like the first three teams we played against this year, you're kind of more prone to be like, hey, we got to play it safe. Let's make sure we get the ball for our offense the next play. 
So are we getting the ball for offense next play? That's a bonus. For, that's a plus for us right now. Do we want to get more out of the return game? Of, for sure, we would want to. We're extension of our offense, and we're looking to gain first downs. I felt like during the Green Bay game, we did a good job of making the right decisions, and we gained some first downs, which contributed to us putting points on the board, which led to the game-winning field goal. This last week, we had a missed opportunity when it came to punt return, the very first punt return in the game. And those are the little details, like whether it's our blocking, our hand placement, um, getting pressure on the punter, catch mechanics, all those different things, all those different variables come into play. So that play right there, we get a, I think it was a 16 yard return and we had a holding penalty before the ball is caught. So how that works is if the, if there's a penalty before the ball's caught, it's going to be 10 yards from where the ball was caught, unless it was inside of 10, it's half the distance to the goal line. So it was a 24 yard, uh, loss of field position for us. So it really hurt our offense not having that ball in the 36 yard line in a great environment like Ford Field last week. So those are things that we have to get better at. And it's the little details because we, we fully trust Mike Hughes back there as our punt returner. And his best days for, as a Falcons yet to come when we talk about him as a returner. And we're excited for this week and any opportunity that he gets because right now we're guaranteed zero opportunities on punt return. So we have to make the most out of it. And then those little details as starting with myself as a coach and our players will add to big results in the return game, which will help our offense. Uh, so a week ago, when I asked you if Mike Hughes was your punt returner, you listed like 30 guys. You just said you fully really trust him. Well, I guess did something change in the last week? No, and I'll answer that question. I fully trust all of our returners. <laughs> I'm just so happy when we're saying Mike Hughes is back there last week in Ford Field, and we trust him. Whoever we put out there to cross that white line and enter the field to play for us, we trust him with everything that we're doing, whether it's Scotty, Mike, D, Bijan. We trust all those guys, and even when Avery is up, we trust those guys. And we want to make sure that we're not limit. I'm never going to limit our players in this room. I've been a part of it as a player where people try to put a label on you and limit you as a player. We have a lot of different guys that can return the ball. And like I said before, Xavier Malone, he's on the practice squad. That, that he has great return ability. So if, if their number is called and we have certain situations, we want to put certain guys back there, Mike, we trust them. And, and just like the other 10 guys that are blocking, like D. Alford, was he trying to get a penalty? No, he wasn't. He wants to make the best block for Mike Hughes. And the first thing he says, he goes straight up to Mike and he apologizes about that because he cares. He cares, one, about his team. He cares about Mike and he cares about his own personal work and his craft and what he's doing. And is it going to be perfect? No. But we're going to continue to work. It's going to be uncomfortable with the way we're putting in our work, but it allows for great growth in our, our special teams unit. So to answer your question, we trust everybody. And I can't just label him and say, hey, Mike's going to be our guy because things can happen. And then Scotty's out there. You look at the Miami game, Mike. Mike Hughes was starting as a punt returner in preseason, but who ran the punt return back for the touchdown? So, you know, D did. Scott, Mike didn't even get a rep. And whoever we put back there, we expect those guys to get vertical, one, secure the football, get vertical, gain a first down, and come, come, alive, come alive with the football in their hands because they're an offensive weapon for us. It doesn't matter if they're a defensive player or offensive player. They get an opportunity to carry the football. We're going to trust them with all of our – the whole organization is going to trust them to get vertical with it and make plays with the football in their hands. So I, I know, obviously, your kids are very large fans of Young Way. The fact that Toy Story is going to be animating Young Way, and Bradley does that now get them another level in your home with your kids. Uh, they start making toys, and it's going to start breaking my pockets. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I hope we don't make no toys of Koo and uh, Bradley. So. <laughs> they're, you know, they're, they're fans of just the Falcons overall and just the NFL. Be able to be in this position, like I never played in the NFL, you know, as a as a younger kid, my family growing up the way, you know, growing up middle class and never really being around the NFL and to see my, my kids, they're around the NFL players and they love they love the Falcons, they love the players on this team. It's it's a very blessed opportunity to be in be in this position to see our kids grow around this, you know, NFL culture and they love it. They come in the building and act like they own the place. Walking in the cafeteria, grabbing the snacks, walking on the field. My son will walk right past me and say, hey, what's up, Drake? And start talking to him. Like, it's good to see you, too. <laughs> but That's very cool. blessed. And it's cool to see my kids. They're at the age, too, where now you know, they bring their friends to the games, and now they think it's cool. Before, it was like, oh, yeah, my dad coaches football. But now when they bring their friends, they're like, they get the little chest out a little bit. Like, yeah, my dad coaches in the NFL. So I'm kind of turning into the cool dad.
Uh, on the uh, back return, I don't have the all uh, 22, but looks like four missed tackles and the kicker got something. I had to double check when I watched the film again. I thought that 47 was D-led in his prime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw you. I thought like I, when he hurdled the guy at the end, I was like, that looked like D-led back in the day. <laughs> well, it was a great job by Houston. Stand, you know, the ball's on the ground. They dropped the football, and there's no panic. They give a uh, great, great job by Frank. And that's their staff there, the special team staff, Frank Smith and their staff there, um, they did a good job of getting the football and getting vertical and getting outside and make, making a play. So big props to Houston on that. And it's a good job by that fullback, back by picking the ball up and just not going down and trying to come alive with the football. Yeah, I'm gonna ask our video staff to get that D-led that D <laughs> film. Make sure they give it to Bassey and put it on Twitter for you guys. <laughs> Uh, not, this isn't Falcons related, but I'm just curious to get your opinion on this as a guy who's been working with special teams for a while. It struck me in week one uh, that Bills kicker in that Jets game hit that game tying field goal that hit off the flag. On the uh -huh. top. You know, it was a 50 yard field goal. It hits off the top of the upright. Like, are these guys just going to keep kicking it further and further? Like, like are they, are they going to max out at some point? It just seems like. It's been like exponential growth in terms of how far these guys. Can you you look back in the day there wasn't a lot of 50 yard, let alone 40 yard field goals. And the players, we talk about sports science, strength and conditioning, the guys are getting stronger, getting faster, they're getting more powerful. Even Tyler Bass, who's not big in stature, he has a strong and powerful leg, whether you talk about his kickoffs or field goals. And then you look at Matt Prater, he's been doing it for a while and he just hit a 62 yarder in the half versus um, the Cowboys last week. So, the, if they're given these opportunities, and I think also two coaches are taking more and more opportunities and attempts at longer field goals, mm -hmm. just trusting those guys to go out there and put put their best foot forward. Um, I don't. I think there will eventually will be a cap, you know, until you start playing with like some avatars or something like that, and they're hitting seventy yarders. But there is, it has to be some type of cap. But you can see when you know Tucker hits the, the one versus Detroit for the, the uh, overall NFL record. Prater still doing it at a high level. And then you see other guys hitting 60 yarders. And then Matt Gay, NFL record, he had what, 450 yarders in one game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So it is, it's a cool opportunity. It's cool to see the kickers, you know, putting their best foot forward and producing in the NFL. You worked with, with Prater for long enough. I mean, is that just to kind of follow Joey Bassett, a leg strength thing, or is there a different type of mechanic thing that can get you an extra two, three? 40 yards potentially. There, there's a combination of both. There's leg strength, contact on the football. Because you could be really strong, but if you have poor contact on the football or that ball's being held a certain way, it will affect the kick. And then the weather is also a var variable too. You know, Prater hit the one indoors the other day. Uh, when you talk about the overall, um, how would you say it? The, the mechanics when it comes to that, I would say, it just depends on the type of player you're dealing with when it comes to kick mechanics, strength. And then also, too, I look at the, the dynamic of the, 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 the build of the player. Like Tyler Bass has a fast leg. Now, sometimes when, as you get older, that leg speed is a little bit different. Um, Prater still has a fast leg when it comes to that. But the contact is, is really good when it comes to him hitting the football. So it just it's a lot of different variables, Mike, when it comes to the overall leg strength, contact of the football, when you talk about those field goal kickers. But Prater, I, I feel like being with him, and he stays consistent with his process and his approach to the football. He treats a 33-yard PAT no different than how he makes contact on a 62-yard field goal. Now, the other variable, too, to answer your question, you can, you look at uh, Tucker when he hit the NFL record, he did back up two more yards, which – which makes it for a longer get off time. So your protection must be at a premium when it comes to that. So if you go back and watch that Detroit versus Baltimore, he did back up a little bit on a longer field goal. So you can do that if you want to, but now the, now you're putting kind of your protection in a vulnerable spot because they got to protect even that much longer. And in the NFL, that's the, that point 0.1, point 0.2 seconds of difference between a make field goal and a block field goal, Mike. Anything else? What's the furthest you've had a kicker go? Uh, in practice or in the game? Game. 65. Or 63, actually. You make it? Uh, that was last year with Koo versus New Orleans. We got the penalty at the very end. We didn't think we were going to get that last play. They put, and we ended up kicking the field goal. It was a line drive, and it got blocked. 
But in practice, we've tried 64, 65, 67, whether it was with Koo or even with Prater. Is it easy for you to differentiate it being a fun trip and a work trip? No, I think the way that, you know, again, it's we're over there to play a, a football game and, you know, it's a, another game in our schedule that's obviously the most important because it's the next one. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's, again, we travel a lot for this, uh, for our schedule anyways. But ultimately, yeah, there's a little, you know, because our, our days are different, right? Today is our Thursday, but then tomorrow will be our Friday, but the time change and everything else. And then yeah, you want to be able to get out and still do things. But ultimately, you know, we're there to, to go out there and compete. And so... We're, we're excited for the challenge. Why transition to football? I'd much rather talk about Europe. But, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> what do you think about a pinpoint why the offense has been really in the first quarters and third quarters very slow start? Well, again, I mean, there's always variables, right? There's different things that we try to uh, account for and then self evaluate. Ultimately, anytime you don't end a possession in a score, right? You want to see what those reasons were. Um, again, you go back to design. You go back to which part of scheme. You go back to what the defense is doing. Go back to just pure fundamentals and execution. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, you guys all know this. I've been saying it. I'm sure others have it well. Our goal is a score. So when we don't do that, regardless of what quarter we're talking about, um, you know, we go back and we reevaluate. And you're constantly doing that. That's why this game is – the NFL to me is the reason why it's the best of the best, right? You're constantly in a chess match. You're constantly making the next move. You're trying to anticipate the next move. Um, and you're trying to get your players in position to be successful by taking advantage of what you think you might get. So ultimately, regardless of quarter or how those are going, you know, we want to end drives with points. And so when we don't do that, there's always going to be an evaluation. Ultimately, you know, execution, part with making sure that we get our players prepared. Um, you know, you look at why, like, look at, regardless of what team I've been on, right, why do things fail, right? They fail because of a number of different variables, but ultimately, right, there's variables you can never account for. Tip pass, right? A situation where um, they bring something that, hey, unscouted look, how do we go ahead and, and anticipate that next time or prepare our guys? So there's a lot of different variables, but ultimately, to answer your question, I mean, we want to score in every drive. We don't. We want to reevaluate why we don't. They've what, given up touchdowns to tight ends the last two weeks, probably at least. Uh, is there something we can theoretically see there? I mean, I know that things can be very subjective. Yeah, I think that that's the the argument, right? It can be subjective. There's different coverage calls, right, that put different guys in different positions. Um, but ultimately, look, you know. This defense, you watch them on film. We had a chance of practice against them last year. A lot of similar faces. There's some new ones, obviously. But, look, there's a ton of respect for schematically and then how they're coached. I know some of those coaches personally. I've worked with some of those coaches personally on the defensive side. I know their intent. I know their passion. I know it shows in their players because when you watch the film, guys are flying around, and they, and they cause issues schematically. And so they understand how to attack an offense. Um, and I've got so much respect for what they do, not just because of the personal relationships, but ultimately because of how they make you try to evolve as an offense. Arthur mentioned those joint practices as well yesterday, um, and I'm sure, like I'm sure it's the same for them. Like, does that give you? Are, are you like more prepared for what they might bring at you because of what you've seen? And yeah, I don't think I get the question. I don't think it's. The reason why I don't think it's fair like that is you might be going through an install, right? Or they might be putting in, that might be their day of install, right? That when they look at us, if they were game planning us particularly, they might not put those things in, but they need to get it repped and put on film so they can teach off of it. Um, look, you get a feel for the guys, how they play, um, the physical stature of them. And then ultimately, you know, the film is what you go off of. And during the season, three games already this year, like I said before, a lot of the same characters. Um, on defense last year and so you just want to see how they they play and ultimately how they play with one another in terms of their responsibilities and and how they attack offense anything else yeah coach um coach driver said hey y'all we're going to look at uh you know different things to get the offense going what are some of the well, well maybe five things that you all came up with to 
Uh, Did you just go five things? <laughs> and look, you know me for three years, right? I'm, Coach Coach Smith speaks for himself. I'm, you know, however he answered that question, he answered it. Look, ultimately for us, right? We want to go out there. We want to put our best foot forward. We want to be fundamentally sound. We want to execute the plays that are ahead of us. We want to be going to the sideline, talking about what just happened, good or bad, and be able to move on and try to fix issues if there's issues. And if there's not issues, continue to attack. That's ultimately, in all my years in this profession, right, that's how you continue to move the ball forward. And that's really just going to be our goal. And was this scheme issues or personnel issues? Well, again, I mean, there's variables for all of it, though, right, D? I mean, you look at it, and again, you look at this defense, and I said this before, each defense presents different issues, right? You look at last week and how they play schematically. Then you look at this week, how they play schematically. Some might pressure more than others. Some have different rush patterns in terms of what they teach your defensive line in terms of technique. Some teach corners completely different, the exact same coverage call, but how they clue their corners in or safeties in. So ultimately, right, that's week in, week out battle, and you're always trying to attack what you think are the advantages for you offensively and the disadvantages for them and putting your players, right, in the best position possible to execute at a high level and ultimately, right, score points. I know you mentioned, you know, obviously, earlier, you had family, 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 wife, family. Do they yeah. come over to this game? Is this, this is the second week in a row I've gotten the family question that no one showed up. Now, d you did pressure my brother and his wife to drive from Cleveland and show up, so I do appreciate that. Uh, no, I've got no one coming to this game. So if any, so, right, quick drive, right? So if anybody, right, in Europe who I'm related to would like to come now, StubHub or however you get your tickets, but, um, but ultimately, yeah. No, no one's coming. So again, I, I feel like I need to talk to somebody about that again. So thank you for that. Yeah, great. I got issues now. All right. Thanks, guys.